Hello plant fans, Sonia here. This is the story of how I came to babysit a nursery, not just any old nursery, a specialist plants nursery, which is pretty much a holiday for me and probably one of the highlights of my year this year so far. A throwaway comment on Instagram has now turned into a new little chapter. <laughs> So here we are, a new square on the rich tapestry of life and I think this is a particularly exciting square and it's nice to do something outside of the norm. I've got a chance to get familiar with a whole bunch of new plants and not just any plants, they're actually really exciting plants. They're off the wall, they're off the beaten track. You can't walk into just any garden centre and buy these plants. You Basically you have to hunt them down. So here I am, and I'm about to get my swat on. So that's day one finished with. I got the plants watered, everything went well. I ended up being quite social in the end because some people came to see the owner who obviously isn't here, but we had a good old chat. It was really nice to meet them. And yeah, it's gone good, it's gone good. Um... So here we are, day two. I've been away 24 hours. It's been a hot day so far. It's about three o'clock now and I've come in and the plants have started to droop quite dramatically. So thank God I'm here, really. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't think the plants would have made it. I think everything's been watered apart from me. I'm dying of thirst. There we go, see, that's much better. Looking turgid again now. Aha, I've got to use the word turgid. And even the room has had a pretty miraculous recovery. This tall iron weed is about halfway back so far. I wish I had a time lapse on it and then we could watch it spring right the way back up. But anyway, I will check in on it again tomorrow. Okay, well, that's day two, calling that a wrap. I'm not quite sure what's going on because Colin says it takes him about an hour to do the watering and for some reason it's taken me two and a half. But anyway, managed to get there in the end and stop the drought. Day three, day three. Day three here on duty at the nursery and I am taking the opportunity to go around and note down the name of any of the plants that I particularly like and I will go home and make some flashcards of them and commit them to memory. There's a lot to choose from so I'm gonna have to be like quite select. I can't write down everything, there must be, well, I'd guess maybe 3,000 plants. I don't know what I'm guessing. <laughs> My brain's not that big. Yeah, so here we go. This is really cool, very dragony. Got that kind of jungle look that tends to appeal. Roscoea purpurea, reddish bronze. Forgive the pronunciation. <laughs> There's a few tips that I've got actually from Colin, the owner. For example, the labels are always put at the back of the plant and that way you will always know what the face of the plant is bearing in mind that the plant will grow towards the light and grow in a certain direction and quite likely you're going to want to plant it in that same direction he's got loads of ferns like loads all the way down here to meters of different ferns And I understand from him that he's very religious about the labelling of the plants and you can understand why it's literally his bread and butter. And you can see here, Colin's clearly into his epimedium. He's got, must be hundreds 
over a hundred varieties here at a guess. Here's a bit of a fancy one, Epimedium Double Cream. Got a jaggedy edge. I know that Colin was taking part in the RHS Wisley trials on Sanguisorba. I don't know if he's a judge or if he was the plant grower, I'm not too sure, but he is uh, very expert on the subject and you can see that by taking a walk around the nursery. There are many cultivars of it. Some of the fantastically tall, that's the thing I keep noticing, fantastically tall. It actually looks really nice silhouetted. That's the red busby and it's well over a metre. It must be at least a metre and a half. Sanguisorbas, sanguisorbas, more sanguisorbas tons of them this beautiful red stemmed one here this is really tall really nice stem uh, that one is called stand-up comedian that is some nice deep blue another thing to mention is that this isn't a showroom really this is like a working space although you can buy by appointment here but the plant combinations are more or less accidental because they're not actually put out in a display that said some of the tables just look stunning i mean they could be chelsea flower display there's one particular planting combination that i've spotted every day that i've come here and i just love it it's this the black stems here are an aster glow in the dark i've actually just bought some of these off color myself and the white is a phlox phlox maculatum Amiga. Honestly, that black and white combination is doing something for me. Literally love it. Coleopsis. Thing is, if if Colin wasn't actually growing these plants, you'd be hard pushed to find them anywhere. He's been a member of the Hardy Plant Society for many years and he's told me that's where he found a lot of the plants originally and then he has gone on to propagate them honestly like if you can catch colin and team at the plants fair road show you're in for a treat because these actually just get served up to you i can't, I can't stress enough how hard to find some of these plants are so to walk in here and find them all in like one place is incredible really when you're a plant buff there we go, we can see the tall ironweed has made a full recovery. So there we go, day three, over and out. This is day four, it's the last day, it's a straightforward day. Come in, I've done my thing, I've done the watering. If the mission was to keep all the plants alive, and I think that was the mission, then yeah, it's been a success, all the plants are alive and I feel confident that I'm handing it back over to Colin Moore, the lovely owner, in tip-top condition. So consider that a win. <laughs>